Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Stephanie Stevens Show. I am Stephanie Stevens, and I will be your host for the next 30 to 35 minutes here on the Stephanie Stevens Show. Today, we are talking about issues that concerns the LGBT pronoun community. There's a few letters that have changed within the LGBT pronoun community, and I want my guest today to explain that to us. Um, this way, we have a clear understanding of what the LGBT and those two extra letters stand for. And today, I just want to say I want to welcome this very special lady. She was around with me at the beginning. Yep. I, um, so um, please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my show. She's all the way from Soy, and yep. that's supporting our youth. And um, her name is Verlia Stevens. And hi, Verlia, how are you? Good, and look at that. Look how the Stevens with the PH got together again. Yay! Hello. Now, you know, I remember you with how we first, I think we first started really interacting a lot through CKLM. Yeah. And oh, I had a radio show there and you mm -hmm. were doing your show, your um, continent, what was it, Miss? Uh, Miss Toronto Continental. Miss Toronto Continental. And mm -hmm. so, you know, you would come on, go to promote the show and, mm -hmm. and to watch how it grew over the years. It was like, Phenomenal. So we know each other a long time. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's so weird. I, I say this all the, t all the time. No matter what we've been through in our community, we have stood the test of time. Yes, we have. And we stuck it out. And not only that, they will never forget we were there with them when they didn't have anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And today, do they forget? Yeah. Well, I think, you know what's nice? Mm -hmm. Is that because I work with youth that mm -hmm. I actually am allowed to see the um, like the transformation, the group, the, the continuing of the work that we have to do, right? Like so, mm -hmm. say um, you know we did all of this stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, in our time, and then I'm seeing the benefits of it, of now how young people are now taking it in a different direction, especially for 2020. So I, I don't feel a disconnect. I don't feel a disconnect. I, mm -hmm. I, I just feel that this is the new, um, this is the new journey with young people. And I do my best to let them know about us and mm -hmm. what we have done. And quite frankly, what we're still doing. You're still doing things. I am, you know, I say this all the time. I never stopped. No. I slowed down because that's what life is. It's right. You, you, one minute you're, you're up here, next minute you hit a hiccup. Yeah. Down here. Then you get back up and keep going. Yeah. So taught me that just to keep going and never give up. Yeah. Never now, give up. you work with the group Soy, right? Well, I work, yeah, in supporting our youth, which is a program mm -hmm. out of Sherbonne Health. So, Right now, I'm like the mentorship and the peer leadership coordinator. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, that's, I've been there for about, I think, five years now about that. Um, in various capacities, I work with BQI, mm -hmm. uh, Black Queer Youth Group, and mm -hmm. um, also, you know, facilitated like uh, a group called Soy Heat, which is Human Rights Equity Access Team. And I facilitate one called peer lead which is like supporting you suit to support you to support each other um mm -hmm. so yeah like i you know i'm still kicking it they're keeping me young you know um well, you know it's a good thing that you are working with the youth um you know it takes a lot of courage a lot of patience to deal with young people yeah now, do you find it difficult? Why is it so difficult for young black men or just the young men today to approach programs, to reach out? Why do you think it's so difficult? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, to be quite honest, I think in our programs, well, we're not meeting physically now, right? So we're doing okay. things online we can't meet mm -hmm. but i would say that the majority of folks that come are mm -hmm. cis men 
cis okay. black men, not okay. cis women. So that's another question as no. to what it is we are not doing to have like cis women and trans folks, trans and non-binary folks mm -hmm. uh, really come to our programs as well. And also to, I think, younger people as well. They're not ascribing to, you know, how, you know, in our days it's like, you know, you had a male, or female, right? Mm -hmm. Right. They're not going by that binary, right? So, which is kind of, which is kind of beautiful, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, if I had to say, like, you know, I'd say mostly, you know, cis men come, which is fascinating. I don't know if that will change, but mm -hmm. yeah. So they're coming. I think though, but just to answer a little bit more of your question, I think though that when it comes to like cis men. I think, um, you know, like, you know, that's how, and this is me getting political again, like it's just like, I think that's how sexism plays out, right? Masculinity mm -hmm. puts men in a little box. Uh, mm -hmm. They can't show emotion, they can't whatever, right? And mm -hmm. so, you know, to ask for help, I think really makes it hard for them to do, right? Okay. Uh, but at Soy, a lot of them come. <laughs> okay, now, what does, the how would you pronounce how do you say the lgbyt what is it my friend corrected me the other day because apparently there's some new letters in it and i didn't understand what he meant well what we have like well at sherborne health it's mm -hmm. uh two s l g b t uh two s l g b t q right Mm -hmm. So that is like 2S2 spirit, and that's just specifically for the um, indigenous community. Like, two okay. spirit, that's the only time that one is used. And LGBTQ is like lesbian, gay, um, bisexual, trans, queer, mm -hmm. questioning, right? Okay. Uh, so that's what we use. I don't know what Y is, but I know that LGBT, 2S LGBTQ is what we use. Um, mm -hmm. And I just think, oh, um, I know like in the in the Caribbean they actually use LGBTQIA, right? Meaning okay. like lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, mm -hmm. and asexual, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just really making sure that people could see their self reflected, right? Like and I think it will always move and grow, but you know, yeah. <laughs> so now do you find that are you having any real success at making a difference with the young people that come to Soy? Well, let me just put it this way. I think it's not a one-way relationship. I think mm -hmm. I am learning a lot. Okay. I'm quite privileged to get paid while learning. <laughs> and in turn, right? And then in turn, you know, they, you know, hearing my stories to mm -hmm. see my experience, to see how that could fit in for them. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think, um, I think when it comes to gender and, mm -hmm. and sexuality, I think younger people have really taken it in a way um, where it's more inclusive than when we were in our 20s, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, you know, I called myself like a lesbian, right? And, but... I wasn't the best femme, right? Okay. Like I, you know, wasn't, you know, <laughs> Miss Fat Girl, right? You know, mm -hmm. but then, but also feeling left out in a way because I wasn't butch or stud either, right? And okay. so, but I'm always feeling like there was just something different, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so just even like how they talk about gender now makes me feel a part of this community in a way that I never have, right? I still identify okay. as she, I'm a, you know, I identify like she and her, whatever, but still, I don't have to like, I have to look like this, or I have to talk like this, or I have to. Mm. So um, I think like we're learning from each other. And this is what I'm saying. I think, Stephanie, we're not, many of us who did so much in mm -hmm. our time here in Toronto is not getting that opportunity to mm -hmm. do that with young people. I don't know what it's like um, in, the, in, the, in the drag community. You can tell me. I don't know with the younger mm -hmm. ones and the older ones, how are they communicating, if that's good. I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, I have a young one on tomorrow talking about racism within the drag community. Okay. She's trying, to, 
I have, she's on tomorrow. Um, I'm talking about her experiences of going to what she calls the white bars. Right, we'll right. talking about that tomorrow. You'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Now, where are you from? So I am, uh, you know, from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. And, uh, and then moved here a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Now, <laughs> now, do you see... Now, I mean, of course, of course, but of course you would have family still in Trinidad and Tobago. Yes. yes. Now, do you see any change or growth within the LGBT two-spirited community yes. in Trinidad? Oh, God, yes. Um, well, let me just first say that there has been, even since my time, like since, mm -hmm. you know, coming out in the 90s, right, that mm -hmm. uh, there has been a vibrant queer community in Trinidad and Tobago and in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And so they have done things that, you know, you know, we don't get to hear about it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I think now, I think Trinidad is really, I'm so proud of like the work that the activists are doing, but in particular, the mm -hmm. trans feminine folks and the drag queens, again, at the forefront of not only like being violated, but also making change, you know? And so, um, yeah, like they- We have they, been there in the trenches. We've right? always been in the trenches. Right? Now, when you, how do you see, now, do you get any real complaints at Soy from the black youth or the, mar the real marginalized youth? Because I don't want to just say black. Right. The marginalized ones, that how they fit in to the LGBT community at large? Well, you know, in our community here in Toronto, and I think it was like that, at least that was my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, yeah, anti-Black racism in particular, mm -hmm. right? Um, mm -hmm. It's huge, I think. Um, I think, um, you know, like we've always had to struggle to be a part of this community. And when we try to talk about what's happening, I think, you know, the community goes, no, we are gay, we are queer. We don't do that. You don't tell us that this happens, you know? And so I think that still continues today. Um, I also think um, that in terms of um, folks, trans folks, in particular trans feminine mm -hmm. folks, Black trans women, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I think the way how we treat Black, it's so despicable. And in fact, you know, we see how many over the years that have passed away, you know, like, mm -hmm. we have folks that I've worked with at Soy, mm -hmm. who were murdered, right? Um, mm -hmm. I think about Samaya and others, oh, yeah. you know? And, um, and so I think we really need to look how we like the violence that is still continuing among like uh, in the queer community. I don't trust, I, I think the queer community uh, has at large, I think has not been good to us. Um, mm -hmm. And that's why we had to create our own little things. That's why I had to create, like, you remember, I used to have like these monthly parties and whatever, um, mm -hmm. you know, like we had to do our own things because the community at large didn't want us, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. you were able to go in it a little more because of you doing drag, mm -hmm. you know. But I watched the troubles that you've had. Oh, yes. Like, do your things because of yes. who you are. And that mm -hmm. still continues today, right? Like, yeah. that still continues today. You're so right. It continues till today. Yeah. Now, I said this in one of my speeches. It's, it's such a shame in 2020 we now yeah. have done so much for the world at large. We've done everything we could to fit in. Yeah. We not only do we sleep with them now interracially, we work with them, we eat with them, we talk with them, and yet we are still 20 years, 40 yeah. years, still fighting the same fight. Same fight. Now, yeah. what do you think about what's happening now and with all of just the fact of the pandemic, number right. one, now we're into these protests. Now, right. I'm not going to say whether it's good or bad, because I don't want to get on that side, but I want your point of yeah. view because you are a professional. Right. 
So well, um, I could tell you that, and I'm not, and I'm not doing this. I could do it as a professional, but I could also do it as me. I have a okay. side, right? Okay. I do have a side. Okay, and so my okay. side is again. This is not the first that this is how anti-black racism has been playing out in our communities. We're talking about a system that we live in. I know you're from the States. Mm -hmm. I am from the Caribbean, right? We mm -hmm. came here, right? Our ancestors came here as enslaved people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And this system was designed mm -hmm. to violate us in particular ways. And it continues, right? And so for me, I think, uh, so for me, I always know that that's a thing. I, I didn't learn about racism against black people mm -hmm. in Canada. I learned about that in Trinidad and Tobago. And I like to say that all the time uh, because this is not something that is unique to the States or unique to Canada. It's a global phenomenon uh, mm -hmm. where we are not seen as human. And so mm -hmm. I'm that, I don't know about you, Stephanie, but for me, that feeling of like, not being human you know it mind it's mind blowing to me that people can feel that it's okay to do that to our lives that mm -hmm. you know that somehow you know we are, well we're not human right mm -hmm. and that and also more importantly for me is how us as black folks internalize those messages and somehow believe that as well so like the stories of well you know you can protest but it has to be peaceful i don't understand how pro protest and peaceful could be in the same sentence one yeah. you know um i think you know and in canada here today it's horrible we know what it's like when the cops come to us we know like i look at young queer black queer folks who come out in the weekends right mm -hmm. we hear mm -hmm. the stories how the cop treated us i had the cops treated me badly or if i'm mm -hmm. with my partner who may be um, very masculine presenting mm -hmm. right i went out with mostly black folks right like mm -hmm. so how they would treat them that that's that's a reality i do think though that there is a little bit of a shift something is different and and it's giving me just this ounce of hope because mm -hmm. i think people who wouldn't necessarily listening are listening and mm -hmm. i think the internet social media it has a big part to playing it and i think that because we have the cameras and we can film that you can't say you know it's not it easy to, so let's say if he did have a fake 20 dollar bill which by any chance by by i don't know if you realize that it wasn't fake so let's say that he did have a, a 20 dollar fake bill that doesn't mm -hmm. mean he should die in fact that doesn't mean that he has That's to go to jail true. even That's true. First of all, what first of all, what I don't understand is with the clerk. I mean, I don't I don't exactly, get into the, phone, the exactly. clerk could have just said we can't take this twenty dollar bill it. and go on about your business. That's it. That's it. None of but this. Guess what? Funny. They knew that if they call, that something bad was going to happen to this person. Mm -hmm. They knew that. And for me, that's the piece, right? When the woman mm -hmm. in the park, right? When mm -hmm. she threatened him, you know, like she is saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell them it's an African American man, right? And they mm -hmm. will stop running and we'll kill him. Mm -hmm. They know that, right? And so, but I think though, what's the shift is that woman who did that, for example, I think. She's the kind who like voted for Obama, would have voted for Obama to the time. For me, mm -hmm. the people who say that they are our allies, those are the ones that are being put on the spotlight. And I think that's what, I mean, let me tell you something. Those like the, the KKK people, like, we know them. I don't know about you, mm -hmm. but I'd be safer. If I know that you're KKK and you're telling me, you know, and go home, I mm -hmm. get it. I could protect yeah. myself. Is the ones who profess to be, well, you know, like the ones who may date us or marry us or want mm -hmm. to have us along their thing and we want togetherness. Those are the ones. Those are the ones that I think that's the shift this time. They actually are being checked mm -hmm. and they actually have to 
they're being called on things and they're doing mm -hmm. different. So for me, that gives me a little bit of hope. Now, you know, what I like mostly about the fact that you work with the youth, mm -hmm. the majority of the people taking part in the protest are yeah. youth. I thought, I are youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I actually thought that maybe this would fall on deaf ears because you know, with so many people on their phones and internet, and the only thing they're they're concerned about is either selfies or hooking up. Right now, the fact that they took to the streets to protest yeah. something that they felt that now they can see for themselves. Yes. Now, let's say when you go back to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you have to deal with the aftermath of right. all of this right. with your youth. Right. What, how, do you, how are you going to approach talking to them? Because we can't just let this die. At the end of the right. day, this still needs to be discussed on and on. Right. And young people, we know if you don't keep their attention, they lose, they have an attention yeah. span of, it's gone. Well, we, we have already, like at Soy, for example, we are now having online groups. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we just started having this Soy check-in where mm -hmm. they come on Zoom and they'll meet and you know, we'll have these conversations. And then we have breakout rooms on Zoom. Okay. So, so say if uh, like, so there'll be a breakout room specifically for black queer youth who want to come. There'll be mm -hmm. one for trans identified and non-binary youth. And there'll mm -hmm. be one for youth if the group is called Express and it's mm -hmm. for youth who are newcomers immigrants, okay. refugees. So we have those breakouts so that we're trying our best, even though it's, it's challenging because one thing with soy that we, that we have, we did a kind of a evaluation thing a couple of years ago, and the majority of the youth that access our services are newcomers, mm -hmm. refugee, trans identified youth who experience in homelessness right mm -hmm. black white so so you know having access to like a proper phone or like a you know like a tablet or something right mm -hmm. that's making it challenging for us to meet online so mm -hmm. we're talking to our manager and actually tell people if people want to give you know like we want mm -hmm. tablets we want telephones we want you know like so that we are able to well, tell us how we can get a hold of soy and who right. so, if people want to donate, who do they, who do they contact? If they want to well, donate money or they want to yeah. donate tablets. Um, Sherborne Health, if they go to the website of Sherborne Health, mm -hmm. there is a donation um, button that you can just go and you'll get contacted to the person who like, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, just a few more questions of, of your no time. No problem. Now, now, you know, I, I adore you. I've always adored watching you because you work so hard and you're always smiling and diligent about just getting it done. Yes. Now, what do you see happening with the gay community in Toronto now? I mean, with this pandemic, no jobs. The future of drag yes. is really uncertain. I know. The future of people not having any money or a real job or even the performers and the black people who are new, like you said, to the community, yeah. not having a foothold in the community. There's some very, I don't know. I agree. I don't know. I, you know, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I just so concerned about folks who, you know, drag, you know, like the drug, the art of drug is my thing. I mean, I've had a love from it for day one. What can I say? Right? But uh, well, that's better. I had love for drug for a long time. And, um, you know, I, 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 I know that online they're trying to do things. I hope people, you know, will give money, right, to people. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's tough. And I mean, I think it's not only drag as well. There's like jobs that we've been doing, you know, like to survive. I think again about the trans feminine community. I, I think about, you know, like folks who, you know, may do drag, may do sex work, right? May do mm -hmm. all of these different things. And now, right like that's so hard but i actually see that there are some programs i think 
I heard of something from Glad Day that they're giving, they, they, they're collecting money and they're giving out to like, I think drag performers. Mm -hmm. I think folks who do sex work. I think um, mm -hmm. folks experiencing homelessness. So there's a few things around, right? To support people. Okay. But what's going to happen when, you know, like know. going into the bar and watching, you know, somebody perform like that's just, it's, you can't recreate that online. Like, mm -hmm. Now, what do you, what advice do you think that you can give to just the general LGBT pronoun community trying to go back to work, trying to get work, trying to just get back to what we think of as normal? Right. Well, and, you know what I want to say, Steph Stephanie? Um, I don't. I don't think that we can ever go back to normal. Okay. Pers personally, I think we just have to do different, right? And okay. so, because actually, normal wasn't all that great for lots of us, anyways. Yeah, that's true. I don't that's know. True. I mean, maybe if they've changed, I haven't. Gone I haven't been going into bars recently, but I think to, if we want to talk about drag queens in particular, Toronto mm -hmm. is extremely horrible with how oh, they yeah. treat oh, yeah. art form. Don't pay them good so that you know they don't they're not able to recreate and whatever. So mm -hmm. for me, like go back to that, I don't know, because you know, like we weren't being very supportive, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, what can we do? What can we do different, right? You, like, you know, I found something rather strange. I'm, I, I just, um, with the youth today, mm -hmm. you know, having something me and you had very little of, right. the internet. Right. We grew up with Bill Gates. Right. And Apple and Microsoft. Something where they were just starting their business and trying to get it going. Right. Now, 20 years up and 20 years back, me, you, and him would be closer to the same age. Right. Now, the young people today who access the internet, which is the most powerful tool mm -hmm. for them to have and not be able to understand it enough to make millions of dollars, but yet, Khloe Kardashian's and them can just take pictures all day and make millions about dating black men and taking selfies. Now, what, <laughs> what is it that the young children can't figure out? Well, but I mean, like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I cannot believe you put Kardashian in my in this thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was just trying to. Uh, I'm not, I know what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that damn family who just like have to do not oh what a what privilege is a hell of a thing mm -hmm. that you could like you know and i mean the mother's pimping them out so like mm -hmm. i mean whatever you know so no i don't want that millions but i do but i have to tell you though stephanie and maybe i'm sounding like if i'm sounding like i'm supporting the young people i am because mm -hmm. um they are doing things online right okay. especially now trying to find innovative ways to um keep community to make money like you know um i'm watching folks like having like you know not just a club quarantine thing but mm -hmm. having like online things where you know people can donate to the dj or mm -hmm. donate to the uh to the to the to the performer or like i saw recently mm -hmm. briefly uh um you know like uh, the houses like the house of Monroe and the pink mm -hmm. lady house and whatever doing things online and getting mm -hmm. people to donate and so you know I mean I do not go to the house I don't go to the Vogue stuff right like I don't go to it but mm -hmm. you know, so I don't want to you know comment on you know whether it's okay. good or not sure. but I can tell you they're making money oh okay all right that's right? a good thing then that is a good thing they'll keep a roof over yeah. their head 
I, I, I told you, I tell you all the time, I'm always on the hustle. Even though I, I live alone. <laughs> Even though I live alone, I'm on the hustle. Now, <laughs> do you think, do you see positive, like you say, you see some glimmer of hope. I hope. Do you I see hope. the children following through on the protest? Do you think they're learning anything from this? Yes, well, they started it. They wanted it. They, mm -hmm. they are doing it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, so yes, they know what they're doing. You know, I think about when I came here in the 90s and I was there in the, um, in the protest that we had for cutting uh, outside of the, of, of, of the cop shop at college. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was there in 1990, whatever it was. I was young. You know, I was there, we knew what we were doing. I mean, like the way how people talk about it, it was like vandalizing and looting. And of course, again, it wasn't even the people who were protesting, it was people coming in to whatever, but that's another story. But like, I think we need to, let me take this opportunity. I have this mentorship program. One of the things that I want is to create an intergenerational conversation. So I've been working really hard to have the opportunity for folks like yourself, and you'll mm -hmm. be hearing from me for, for it, and mm -hmm. young folks to exchange and learn from each other. Because I think there is this disconnect and, and it's almost like we're making each other suspect, right? Like okay. the young people think, oh, they don't care. They don't think I know what I, you know, like I don't know what life is. And then the old one, the older one's thinking, yeah, you don't understand the things that I've done. I've done all of these things to mm -hmm. make you whatever, right? And mm -hmm. so, and so I want to be able to do that. So there's a, there's a, there's a program actually uh, in the mentorship program called Melanin Links. And it's okay. actually for black folks and communities. So mm -hmm. we're actually in the process of trying to have uh, something on the 22nd of June where we're trying to get people together, right? Okay. And we're going to try to see at least online how to have intergenerational conversations because I think that's important. Okay. You know, I know I'm scoring. Oh. <laughs> so I want other people to score. Now, in, I, I'm, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time yeah. here, but I just want to talk just, just two or three more questions and then no we'll, wrap, we'll wrap it up. You've been, you've been amazing and very Thank educational. You. Now, with the young Black queer group right. and such groups and things that they probably might not have attended, but they heard of, right. such things as the pride committee and the events that predominantly are um, promoted towards the black community but everyone is welcome such as blocko mm -hmm. or um mm -hmm. blackness blackness yes and mm -hmm. these different groups now why now that we're not going to have pride this year mm -hmm. and the young people are young and eager Mm -hmm. Now, what, how is it that, what, what, what's your advice? What do you think the young kids should do? Because you have to think about this. They're going to be off school soon. I mean, they haven't probably haven't yeah. even been in school. So now they're going to be off longer than usual. And kids with idle hands do bad. Well, not all. <laughs> yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're concerning in some way or another, like we all are at times. But what do you think they should do? Now that they're going to have all this downtime and they're not going to have that celebration that they right. a lot of them would have taken part in for the first time. Well, can I say, I think that Pride Toronto does not cater to young people. Okay. So, so for me, uh, we do a horrible job of it. Okay. We do a horrible <laughs> job of it. Okay. Um, you know, so I'm sitting here going, yeah, as somebody who works in a youth program, you know, we have a little stage for three hours for youth, mm -hmm. way, way far somewhere. On the Sunday, there's nothing. On the Saturday, there's, there's no all day programming for young mm -hmm. people. You know, the way how Pride is now is just catered to just adults and especially quite frankly, white queer folks, cis guys, 
Like, you know, like there's mm -hmm. nothing. So it's not actually, to be honest, a safer space. So let me just say, you know, I'm really sorry in this pandemic. I don't want to get COVID. I really don't, right? I'm mm -hmm. working from home. I'm very lucky to work from home. But I want to say that this also, when I look at the good of things, like this is an opportunity for us to regroup. Like how can we bring back community to Toronto Pride? Listen, Stephanie, like you all, like especially when I look at drag, the drag culture and drag queens doing their thing, right? These are the folks like who have had us creating community. I don't know about you, but try, mm -hmm. try Toronto. The, I mean, yes, you'll get your little gigs every year, but you remember the days when you all were centered, when mm -hmm. you all would just take over the stage, like not even, you know, Blocko has enough drag uh, performances and stuff anymore, you know, like, like, so for me, it's not about community. So uh, in other words, am I gonna miss it this year? No, <laughs> like. <laughs> You know, I am, glad, yeah, I am glad that we had this discussion today. Yes. You, I mean, you could talk forever. Um, yes. I like the fact that you, that you're working with the youth and you're giving people like me who nine times out of 10 don't have too much time for children. Right. Even though I, even though I had a few on my show and they engaged me a lot on, yeah. on social media and I'm sort of in tune with the RuPaul Drag Race thing. I'm not deaf, it's not deaf to my ears. Right. So I'm open to giving the children a chance to be who they are, to yes. help create themselves, help create the, help make things better for the community. Yes. Now, and I'm grateful that me and you are still here pushing. Yep, still. And helping, <laughs> supporting. Yes. And just being there, even though they have beat us up in this community for years. And we know, and you know, and I know that this community was built on the back. Yes. All of us. Yes. And, and the forefront, the drag queens. Yes. And let me just say, the black drag queens. There you I'm go. not mincing. I'm not mincing. I don't have okay. time to make nice nice. That's okay. the reality, right? Yeah. You know, when I think of like you, I think about Chris, I think about uh 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 uh, uh Michelle. Uh, Michelle, I think I think about Duchess. I think about like this is what like you know like when you all were wrong this totally shifted drag, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and despite how you all were treated, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I'm not paid properly because of you all keeping culture alive, keeping the queer culture alive, right? Mm -hmm. And like, I'm getting like pittance, like this is yeah. just, like let's, let's, got, let's they, be real. This, this community got rich of the black drag queens. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Right? And, and we it, don't hear about that, right? Yeah. And so, so great. So am I gonna miss Pride this year? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> now, in closing, in closing, Berlia, um, now, you know, in America, yeah. gay, gay, the LGBT pronoun community is not afraid to be black owned and operated. And they're not ashamed to put that in the window. I see a lot of that in Chicago. Okay. Now, why is it that Toronto never had Toronto. their own <laughs> gay space for black, not just black people, just owned and operated by this establishment is gay owned and operated. Well, I, I think, I think, um, you know, you know, we may all be black, right? But mm -hmm. we're all coming from these different points of entry, right? Like, okay. you know, I am a black person from Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And there is differences, you know, like from Jamaica, from the States, who are like from, you know, Halifax. Who, like, mm -hmm. so, and the way, 
and the way how the states is, at least my mm -hmm. understanding, married to one now, right? Like that, and the way <laughs> <laughs> the way the state is that if I'm a black person and I'm living in the States, right, then mm -hmm. they have this um, melting pot where like then I just become African American. That's how I'm seen. And and my Caribbeanness is not right because I'm okay. melting into being an African American, which I mean is fine, it's black, I'm good, right? But okay. here in Canada, we have multiculturalism. And where okay. one person would say that is great. I think there's a lot of critiques for it because then what it does is that, you know, we have all these separate things, but it's hard for us to connect, you know, for uh -huh. somebody who has tried over the years to have black things. Mm -hmm. um, like remember I used to run a lot of monthly parties all over the city with like yeah. big bread and stuff. And, yeah. you know, and it, it wouldn't last for all kinds of reasons. One, you know, if we want black folks to come, we have to recognize there's a bunch of us in our communities that would not be able to afford, right, to, to, yeah. to pay to come in. And you have to remember, when they see us, when we go to these bars or whatever to have our black friends, they want to tell us that, you know, we have to make $10,000 at the bar for you yeah. to do the thing. And those things are hard. And we know that, you know, people will come and may not be able to buy at the bar. So they will drink before, because, you know, mm -hmm. come and have a good time. And so things get this. And it all is, uh, is under this guise of anti-black racism that makes it really hard. And then, you know, we fight. It's, sometimes it's hard, you know, like, mm -hmm. if, you know, it's hard for us to like each other. Right. Okay. From that, but that's mm -hmm. anti-black racism again divide and rule you know and so yeah i mean i don't know like it's hard for us to own places mm -hmm. i hard for us to get a space yeah you know for me in closing yes i just want to say it was a real honor talking to you i haven't seen you in a long time yeah, yeah i know i'm good it's just good to see you um just to <laughs> let you know i'm doing i'm doing well I'm things happy. are going great um, a lot of good things happen to me so out, out of, you know, misery, yeah. but um, I'm blessed. And you're so, looking good. Oh, thank you. And I just want to say is you've always been a friend and you've always yes. been nice to me. So I just want to say thank you for all that you do for the thank youth you so much. and especially for, for just us in general, yes. keeping, us, keeping it straight. Yeah, it just straight, and I like we that. Keep things straight. I don't know. No. We don't well, you know straight. what I mean. Keeping, <laughs> keeping, the, um, keeping the word straight. Yeah, got it, got it, got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> so because we're very bendy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, in closing, I just want to say, now, how do we get a hold of you? Now, what is it that the Sherman Health Center needs, and what is it? Okay. For soy, what is it? So that what I would suggest is that you go to Shivan, uh, uh, shivanhealth.org, I think. Like go to Shivan mm -hmm. Health on the website, and there's a donate button. So they will tell you how to donate what programs. But if you go to soy, then people would be able to donate to soy, and they can actually be specific as well right like mm -hmm. say like we want to donate money to the mentorship program we want to donate okay. money to bqi black Queer Youth, or express or you know tfc like so you can so but you just have to go on the website okay thank you Verlia. thank you thank oh my god Lots of love. thank love. you for all that you do and thank you for continuing to do all that you do because you always you know, the thing that's wonderful about you is that, yeah, you have your hustle, you know, the hustle, mm -hmm. but it's always centered with community. It always is. And I appreciate you and thank you. And I'm going to use you in my mentorship program to come and talk to people. <laughs> okay. okay, no problem. Thank you, Verlia. Take care. Bye-bye. Ladies Bye. and gentlemen, today I had on my show Miss Verlia Stevens from Soy. Um, so thank you guys so much and have a great weekend, everybody.